And I'm going to tell you something right now. Strength feels attractive. When you start to feel stronger, that makes you feel more confident and starts to make you feel more attractive. And it's and it's compounded with the empowering feeling uh, or the empowering aspect of the fact that you are choosing to do this. You're doing this thing and it's improving your body and it makes you feel more attractive. All right, today's giveaway, MAPS Anabolic, the program that started all free for one of you viewers. Here's what you got to do to win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, do all those things. And if we like your comment and we pick you, you get free access to MAPS Anabolic. Also, this episode is for moms out there, for Mother's Day. So here's what we did. We took all of our bundles that are most popular with our moms and female listeners, and we put them 60% off. All the ones that women tend to like the most, 60% off. Not 50, but 60. Huge discount. Here's what they are. We have the Fit Mom Bundle. We have the Bikini Bundle, the Build Your Butt Bundle, and the Fabulous 40s Bundle. All an additional 60% off. So if you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code MOM60 for that 60% off discount. By the way, this ends... Uh, midnight on Mother's Day. Okay, so you got to take advantage of this soon. All right, here comes the show. You know, one of the the top topics, I should say, that used to come up as a trainer, uh, training lots of regular people, was just parents not being able to find the time or make the time to take care of themselves, especially moms. I used to get this a lot with the moms that I would train. And I know that, I mean, you guys both train in similar environments. I would say the majority of the clients that I trained were women and a majority of them were moms. So this, mm -hmm. was, this was like a common thing that I would have to work through was being able to, to, to find the reason, the time, and then, you know, the motivation or the consistency around finding the time to, to take care of themselves. So I think we should talk about what, you, what this is all about. Real quick though, what do you think that is? Like, I totally agree. Uh, yeah. I'd say somewhere between 65 and 75% of my clientele over two decades was uh, moms. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it wasn't just me and, and then the rest of my trainers had total different, like that was pretty, that was pretty common for most trainers. I would say a majority of personal training clients uh, are women, and then a majority of them are moms. So it's it's, it's more common. Yeah. So what what do you think it is a, about moms that what drives them to actually look to hire a personal trainer versus any other demographic? What do you think that is? Well, I think in general, and we're going to make some generalizations here, yeah. but you know the whole stereotype of the, of the guy that doesn't ask for directions. So I think. <laughs> Part of it is is men are less that's, likely. To that's pass half it right away. Yeah. Right away, I think half of the reason yep. is just men are terrible mm -hmm. at, at admitting that we need help mm -hmm. or admitting we need direction. I yep. think, and that's that's been proven already. Oh yeah, that's a fact. so I think that's already half. And then then it's like okay, well then, so we already know that you're going to get mostly women just because of that. Okay, that we figured that piece out. But it did seem like I had a, a lot more mothers than I had like the, and I did train quite a bit of very successful uh, single women that were, you know, 25 to 35 too, but not as much as I trained yeah. moms. I think it's because, we, and we'll get to this, right? Because this is a, this would be a good, good topic. But I think it's because when they get to the point where they're like, okay, it's important to make some time for myself. It's important I take care of my health and, and my fitness that they're like, I don't have a lot of time to waste. Yeah. I'm not going to schedule this and be as yes. efficient as possible. And it's, you see this all the time. It's like, it's almost like the martyrdom syndrome where, um, you just end up like caring about everybody else so much and like scheduling everything revolving around everybody else. Mm -hmm. But now, wait a minute, I'm burnt out. Like I really need to look at what I'm doing. And I, I would get a lot of moms like that coming in that just yep. almost need it as an outlet. Yep. Totally. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think that that I, I remember m multiple times where I'd sit down and kind of have like, a a mom sit down and prioritize like her, her day of all the things that she yeah. has to accomplish. And it's crazy. They would always list all these things and never you, would you see themselves anywhere on there? They take care of so much mm -hmm. and they, their themselves is like last. And I'd have it as like an exercise where we would do that. We'd write it down and be like, where are you? Mm -hmm. And I many times had women like break down, like crying. And so like, like literally having a realization that like, man, I don't even prioritize myself at all. And like trying to figure out how do I, unpack this and fix this because for so long I've been, you know, serving my kids or my husband or my household or all these other things that they're trying to manage and still not taking care of themselves. When they start to realize that if they, if they, 
prioritize themselves still first, which is really hard to get, I think, a, a mom to make that switch, mm -hmm. that all those other things that are so important to them actually improve also. Yeah, they're more yeah. effective. Right. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, I have a great mom. I I've, uh, I love my mom. She's incredible. And But she would, she had a tough time. She still does, has a tough time taking care of herself when there's her kids, her grandkids, you know, my dad and all those other responsibilities. I mean, to the point where, you know, we'll eat over at my parents' house once a week still, so, or almost once a week. So let's say we go there for Sunday dinner. She'll get the food out. She did all the cooking or whatever. And then she's like, no, everybody start eating. And she's still doing stuff. And it's like, you know, Ma, sit down, eat with us. And she's like, no, no, no I got to get this. I got to do that. And so it's like, she, she does it even with dinner. And I've had these conversations with her and I hear from her what I used to hear from a lot of my clients, which was, I feel guilty taking time away and doing stuff, especially when you have little kids, right? You have little kids that need a lot and you're like, oh, I'm going to go take an hour out mm -hmm. when I could be doing something for my daughter or my son or for their school. I'm going to go take time out to go for a walk or go exercise. Like that seems, that feels uh, selfish. There's something so admirable about that at the same time. It comes from a good yeah. place. Yeah. It really does. But what, what really, if you take a step back and you look at it, it actually makes you uh, not effective. And then over time, the thing that you want to do the most, which is uh, take care of your family or take care of these responsibilities, you're not even able to do because you're fried or because your health starts to suffer or you just feel bad yeah. about yourself because you're not doing these things. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it has to be a conscious kind of decision and it's a tough one. Um, but if you, you know, what's that saying? You can't pour from an empty cup. Yep. It's like, you got to be able to kind of, you know, take care of you. And, and, and part of the problem is that a lot of the moms that I trained, um, my wife, my wife is like this. Uh, my mom was like this is they're so resilient. Like they can keep, <laughs> it's like they have this endless reserve of like, I'm just going to keep, you know, beating Motoring myself up. through it. Yeah. Yeah. And keep going. And, um, again, admirable. Uh, it's, um, it's, you know, I, I look at my mom or my wife and I think, warrior like you're such a warrior for the family and for your kids but we gotta we gotta pause for a second and um you know it's like you have a car you gotta put gas in the in the tank and you gotta you know take care of the engine you gotta change the oil you can't just keep running the engine eventually it's gonna it's gonna break down no i know we're talking about moms but i also found a lot of parallels with the high performing ceo male ceo even right so and just in general that that mindset of having to operate so many other things in life, it f sometimes forces those people into thinking that themselves has to come last because there's so many other important things that they have to juggle. And I think the same realization happens for them when they when they start to really take care of themselves and prioritize themselves that all those other things that they're juggling that is so important to them, they, they don't lose value. They don't mm -hmm. lose any sort of time towards them. In fact, you somehow, and they all end up finding this out like so crazy. I now dedicate X amount of hours a week to myself for improving myself. <clears throat> and I feel like I'm actually getting more time in all these other things that I've been juggling for so long, but it's the transition or the bridge to get them there. That is the, the hardest part. Or the I challenge. used to hear that from people all the time. And, and there's not a lot of studies on parents on this, um, besides maybe surveys and stuff. <laughs> Uh, but there are actual studies when it comes to uh, business. And I used to use these studies when I would go and approach corporations for corporate membership. So when I used to run gyms, for people who don't know, right? So you manage a gym and part of your responsibilities is, is getting new members, right? And part of that strategy is going to large companies and doing what are called uh, corporate memberships. So like I would go to, let's say I go to Google and I'd say, hey, um, you know, Google has their own gym and stuff now. But back in the day, a lot of these companies didn't. And I'd go to these companies and say, hey, you can get a corporate membership. It's a discounted rate. And then what it would do is it would cover the enrollment fee or maybe the entire fee of a gym membership and your employees would have access to our gym. And, it's a, and, and here's the statistics on the value that you get for every dollar that you spend doing that. And the statistics show that for every dollar that a company would spend on their employees' health and fitness – they would get $2 back in uh, productivity, in uh, reduced absenteeism. So people would be less likely to, to show up to work uh, late or, or be sick or call in sick. Um, they're more productive when they're at work. I said that. So they for every dollar, they get $2 back in productivity. And I'd show them these, num these statistics. There's actual data that shows this. 
And that sometimes would work and then they'd sign up. And then they would, of course, stick around because their employees would find value in it and they'd see that. There aren't studies on on parents in this, but it's just as true. Like, uh, I work out early in the morning. I do that for a reason because uh, I, it's hard to, to get it done later on in the day when things can get in the way. But I know when I work out, I'm a much a calmer father. I'm a much more productive person here when we're doing the podcast. Uh, I feel healthier. I feel better about myself. Um, I'm just husband. more effective. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just more effective. So that so it's you know in, in advertising there's a phrase where you you trade uh, dimes for quarters. So like oh you spend this much, ten thousand dollars in advertising, but you get back twenty thousand dollars in revenue. Well that's worth it, right? It's totally worth it. That's uh, what's you know what we have with with fitness. Um, and, but the, but there are definitely some challenges, and there definitely are some some stumbling blocks and things that get in the way of doing that. And there's also things to consider when you don't have kids, when you don't have responsibilities, when you don't have uh, lots, lots of other things in your life. When you're just, you know, you're, you're just going to school and you live at, mo at home with mom and dad, you don't have a lot of, you have time, you know, and maybe you think you don't, if you're listening and that's you, but you do trust me one day, you'll realize how much time you have where you can go to the gym. You can waste your time. You can do all these different things when you're a parent or a mom. And by the way, st statistics will show this data will show this. Even working moms still do more work at home than dads do. So they just do a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, you have you, you don't have all the time in the world. So there's some things that you have to consider when you say, okay, this is important. I need to take care of myself. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think of stories of uh, growing up that, uh, you know, my mom kind of shined and showed me an example of this. And she was really good at um, being consistently uh, going to jazzercise and making a routine of movement and exercise. Oh, yeah. It was a really good model. That's why you like jazzercise. For so me, for, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the only reason. <laughs> It was very impressionable uh, <laughs> for me in my youth um, <laughs> watching that. But uh, going through puberty, either watching. way, <laughs> she brought me along, and you know, it was just it was Big just a thing. Guy. It was like part of um, you know growing up. It's like these are important things. Like I'm not gonna, um, you know, like uh, I'm not gonna to to compromise this. This is something that's valuable for the way that I then can operate the rest of the day. And so she was like very much modeling that to me, uh, that, uh, you know, health was, was something that kept, kept everything in balance and, and kept us all, um, unified as a family. So that was definitely something I took away. Do you guys think there, there was, there's a, a generational challenge here though, too? Like, like I see a major difference be between this conversation, like think I'm thinking about right now, my mom too, right? Like comparing my mom to like Katrina, and it's way different. Yep. Yeah. And and I think that the like the, the it's more acceptable, or quote unquote, now to take care of yourself and work out I, I, than it was before. I agree. I, I think that I think my mom's generation it was that wasn't really at least not till later in her life did that start that conversation start to happen mm -hmm. more often. I feel mm -hmm. like yeah. Where Katrina, I had that already. She already had that in built in her when we met. You know, almost thirteen years ago now. And of course, you know, being married to a trainer, I'm sure that it, I, there was things that I instilled in her that just really pushed that even further, mm -hmm. um, where that wasn't a thing that for my mom, my mom, you know, what I got from my mom is from like the motherhood side is like her resiliency, her ability to handle all this stuff. Like my mom has gone through so much shit from childhood all the way to adulthood that I can't, sometimes I, I, I forget, you know, like mm -hmm. some, I, there's times when I've been harsh or hard on my mom about, you know, things that I went through. And I think back like, fuck man, like I think I had some things hard, like she had it twice as hard as I had. And so a lot of my resiliency comes from, you know, watching the way she did stuff. But unfortunately I don't think she ever found that, that balance or found that ability to like really prioritize herself and her health first. And I don't think she ever got the opportunity to see what would happen to all the other things that she was managing and juggling had she first prioritized her own health? Yeah, my, my mom wasn't good at it. She still isn't. Like if I get up to, 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 we'll eat dinner and I'll get up and I'll start putting dishes away and stuff, she'll take them out of my hands and try and do, and <laughs> I have to like, yourself, yeah. I have to argue with her. No, yeah. sit down. And then the way I get her to stop is I figured out a trick when I was a kid. The way to get my mom to do something would be to hug her and kind of hold her and she'd get a little irritated, but because she likes being hugged so much, she'll stop. So I'd like, <laughs> she'll take the dish from me and I'll, I'll be like, Ma, stop. And then I'll hug her and I'll be like, I'm not going to let go until you let me wash the dishes. And then she kind of gives in a little bit yeah. and lets me do it. 
but she feels weird even when I, I we get her to do certain things for herself. Now, later generations, you're right. They they start to see the value yeah. in some of this. Um, like with Jessica, you know, I find way more value in paying for, let's say, a nanny three days a week to watch the baby so she can work out. Way more value in that than in saving the money from the nanny so that she does it. And then what happens is she's not able to take care of herself. She's going to be far more stressed. And I know what that feels like if I if I don't exercise. So it's very, it's very, very important. But again, you got to think of yourself like, you know, like a, like a working machine. Like none of us would treat a machine that was important to our lives that way. Like if you had one car for your whole family mm -hmm. and it was crucial that you had this car, it's got to take me to work. It's got to take me home. It's got to take the kids to school. It's the only way we can go grocery shopping. You would never ignore the engine. You would never not change the oil. You would never not fill it with gasoline. You would be like, oh, we got to take care of this vehicle because if we don't, we're screwed, right? So that's kind of the big, um, that's the big message here. So I get, and the way that I would appeal and the, the way that I've gotten my mom to work out in the past is I've said exactly that. I've said, mom, I know you do everything for everyone else. You'll be better at doing things for other people if you took care of yourself a little bit. And that's mm. the only way I could get her to kind of make some of those, uh, you know, some of those decisions. It's funny we're having this conversation. It was literally like two nights ago that Katrina and I were having, I mean, we just came off of this like, five day stretch of us having the flu and, and like, yeah. and she poor her, she was like managing everything. And we're, we were laying there finally, like the first night of like Max falling asleep. I'm finally starting to feel a little better. And, and she's just like, man, she's like, I I'm trying, I'm looking at our schedule. I'm looking at all the things that I got going on with work. I'm looking at us being behind right now. Like Max, like he, I can't even take him to school right now. And then she's like, and then I'm trying to, and she's like looking at her, her fingernails. Right. She's like, I just can't, I have no idea when I'm going to take care of my, my nails, my, my hair, my face. Uh -huh. <laughs> and she's going through all these things. Like, and I said, honey, you know, this is one of the things that I said, th this is like a, a next level of where we're at in our relationship, in our life. Like, and, and then also where we've reached like success wise, I said, you know, what's the point of working hard and like you are right now, cause you don't have to and, and making more money and not using that to buy time back. I said, you know, it, it, so many people, they chase these, these things that like monetary things like cars and jewelry yeah. and, and stuff like that. And if you're into that, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you, when you express something like this, that you've already made this connection that you know how, how valuable those things are to you, like to take care of yourself, mm -hmm. like your workout time is you, you've already figured this out. You know, that when you get three or four workouts in a week, like you are so, such a better version of yourself when you go get your hair done, when you get your nails done, like, and I'm so pro all that. So if you need to carve off money to have somebody support and take care of some other things around the house, around work, I'm all for all those things. And you should do that because you know that all the other things in your life yep. that you're juggling only get enhanced when you do that. She's kind of sitting there, like just st staring off the ceiling, like, I don't know why I'm not doing that. You know, yeah. like I, I have the I have the ability to do that, yet I'm still not doing it. It is that selflessness, I think, that's kind of built in in moms that even when you know, like she knows, she's seen and applied it, still it's not the natural instinct yeah. to still do that. It has that. to be like deliberately scheduled. Yeah. You know, and I, yeah, I've had that same conversation with Courtney all the time and, and she's getting better at it, but it's just, yeah, it's just always a constant where do I need to take the kids? What do I need to do here? Like, how can mm -hmm. I, you know, do all these things for the family? And I'm like, you got you, you got to take time for yourself. You got to go hang out with your friends. You got to go, you know, be yourself and, and, and uh, you know, really consider filling yourself back up. So you have that kind of energy and, uh, you know, stamina to, to just keep this thing going. Now we're talking about our mothers and our wives who I think all really get this right now. When I think about my clients and when I think about probably people that are listening to this more, right, which I would think are closer to more like my clients, I think like the number one hurdle or challenge is I think they think they have to do so much more than what they really need to do. And mm -hmm. it just seems impossible. Because when you're someone like Katrina or any of our, our wives and they're looking at their 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 day, if you thought you had to be in the gym every single day yeah. for hours, Good at point. A, hours at a time and you got to do all this meal prepping mm -hmm. and you do all these things to and calculating the time it's going to yeah. take you to get to your desired outcome yeah. and all that it's just being, it would be impossible it yeah. would be impossible with all the things that they they tend to manage and so i think that's the the number one hurdle for most yeah, people yeah it's like why bother if i'm not going to be able to do this every single day that's right that's which right. which hopefully if you listen to our show you know that's a total myth you yeah. can be very effective 
with well-planned and structured workouts uh, that are really targeting beneficial adaptations, meaning uh, adaptations where your body changes and how those work for you, you can be super, super effective. I used to train, most of the clients I ever trained were everyday regular people who just wanted to improve their fitness and health. They weren't trying to get shredded, but they want, they did want to be relatively lean, strong, and mobile. Most of them worked out with me twice a week, two days a week. That's it. So it was two hours out of the entire week. And then they would build in a little bit of activity throughout their normal days. Like we've talked about before, where maybe you go for a 10 minute walk after lunch, or, you know, you, you park further, uh, when, you know, from the store. So you walk a little further, by, by the way, this all adds up. It actually makes a big difference. That would, that yielded because the two workouts that we did were so good think, cause I was their trainer. So I knew what I was doing that gave them phenomenal results. And they were always blown away because we're always told that in order for fitness routines to be effective, they have to be grueling and you have to do them all the time, every day, and your whole life has to be dedicated to that. And part of that comes from the worship that we have over fitness celebrities and athletes, mm -hmm. which that's their job. So, and, and number two, oh, it's the marketing dude. We, yeah, they've been marketed to, to, to look a certain way. And when you, when you hear a mom, like 90% of the time, they're not, I mean, you get some that are like, I want to look like I look like when I was in high school, very few, but yeah. so, you know, most are just like, I just want to feel better. Yeah. I just want to yeah. be stronger. I just want to be able to keep up with my kids. I just want to be Pain free. And when you, when you think about those things, it, you don't have to have this set five to seven day a week type of routine. No. In fact, and you don't always have to have the same looking week, which I always try and remind my moms too, is like, because you, it can ebb and flow with these crazy weeks. Like, mm -hmm. of course, the last five days, there was no way Katrina was, was going to be working out. She was taking care of yeah. all of us sick. Like, yep. that's okay. But it's, it's learning how to ebb and flow <clears throat> with the, the diet and movement, and then also learning how to strength train properly so you get to maximize. And you it's unbelievable how healthy and strong that you can be and how productive all those others can be. It's, it's not about trying to have this bikini body all the time. And it doesn't mean that you can't chase that and get that also. But I think when you when you start to make the connection to how much it enhances all the other aspects, it gives you a little bit more flexibility of like, what does this training regimen look it's, like? It's a quality of life enhancer. And we think that the quality of life enhancement comes from looking perfect. That's the, believe it or not, someone might not believe me, but you talk to anybody who's been working out for a long time, over 10 years, they'll tell you this. Of all the things that proper exercise does for you that improves the quality of your life, the way you look is at the bottom. Yeah. It's true. It's the byproduct, really. It's re it, That's actually a side effect. Exactly. It's how it changes your mental state. It's how it improves your metabolism, your health, your mobility, your strength. Here's another one that's huge. And this one was huge for a lot of the clients that I trained. It's the one hour of quiet time that they get. It's true. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you're, when you're a parent- look, Like talking to another adult. Yeah. Dude, when you're a parent, and, and especially when you're a mom, and, and like I said, all the stuff that you do, Getting an hour where, you know, look, <laughs> my wife can't go to the bathroom without my son banging on the door or wants to sit in front of her and watch her go to the bathroom. Like she has no, <laughs> no he takes a nap and she's like, oh my God, I get There's no private time. There isn't. And so when you go and you work out for 45 minutes or an hour, you put your headphones on, you follow a routine, listen to a podcast like Mind Pump or you listen to music or whatever. And strength training is great for this, right? Because strength training, resistance training- you kind of have to be present while you're doing it because the movements are different. You have to focus on your positioning. So you're like, you get like this period of time where you're not getting bothered by everybody. It's just you doing your thing. Um, that alone gives you tremendous value. Then there's the mood enhancement effects uh, from the, the chemicals that, uh, the chemical breakdown that happens in your body through exercise. Proper exercise has been compared to antidepressants when it comes to low to moderate levels of, of depression and anxiety. And it's either as good or better for those things. It improves mental acuity. It, and I know this sounds counter, especially if you're listening right now and you're tired because you're overwhelmed and there's a lot of stuff going on. Like, I don't have the energy to go exert myself. If you do it right, that's the important thing here. So if it's appropriate, you will get more energy out of it. So in other words, it may seem like I don't have the energy to go do something. Well, if you do it appropriately, the energy you expend, you get back twice as much. So you actually have more energy from putting some energy into exercise. So if you're if if part of, of your struggle is, God, I'm tired all the time. How am I going to do this? Like, 
Again, do it appropriately and properly. So and there's a lot that goes into that, but you do it right. You'll come out of it and you'll be, you'll actually feel better at the end of your workout than you did going into it. And then you'll start to feel better over time. And it's compounding to the point where my, this is my favorite thing to hear from the moms that I would train is they'd say, this was after about three months of consistent exercise with me, maybe a couple days a week. And they'd be like, I, I don't drink nearly as much co coffee and I just feel like way more energetic. Like I just mm -hmm. feel like I can do more. I feel up more often. Like I'm able to do more things. I don't feel like I'm dragging, you know, throughout the day or the, or in the afternoon. She's like, it's so weird that expending energy and exercise actually gives me more in return. That's such a new concept mm -hmm. for some people out there that you could work out in a way that actually energizes you mm -hmm. uh, instead of like depletes you of all of your energy. And, um, you know, this is something why we bring that up so often uh, is that there's a different way to approach fitness and to to look at you know what your your workout can do for you instead of just trying to um, you know do the do apply the same martyr uh, sort of tactics into the workout and and just you know take it all on and and try and beat yourself up beat yourself up through through the workout. You know, no, this should, this can be literally like therapy and it can really lift you up and it can mentally, uh, you know, benefit you as well. Yeah, it's, it's our fault. I think that that's a relatively new concept because yeah. for so long, the fitness space has pushed the, the motivation hype and the martyr and the crush. The, yes. What they're trying to do is they're trying to capture all these people who, who looked in the mirror and said, that's it. I hate my body. I hate the way I look. It's time to work out. And then because they're through a, a, this motivated self-hate kind of state of mind, the fitness space markets to it and captures it. Yeah. And, and says, then, oh, and come, we'll beat you up. Don't well, worry. And then and yeah. then think how many how many moms are like disagreeing with what you said. Like, oh no, I've tried this before and it's exhausting. And yeah. then I and then You're I, doing it wrong. Yeah. And that's exactly right. And that's because they're they're coming from the wrong place and they're attacking the gym and this idea of like, hey, I went from no training, no diet, anything. Now I'm gonna do this thing. And this thing is like intense yeah. and it's like so far from where they just were. It's like no, I ain't going to be like you that. You get sucked into that kind of group setting too. And this is That's why right. we kind of uh, bring that up a lot of times yeah. because it is fun and it's an experience, but at the same time, like you just kind of get caught up in, in the momentum of everybody else around you and you do too much. And then yes, it, it's going to totally exhaust you and it's not going to benefit you like it would if you're really uh, studious and paying attention to your body signal on your own. And yeah. moving at your pace. Your pace. It, the, yeah. it has to be appropriate. Look, I'm going to say something that might sound controversial, but which is silly to me, but you should feel better if you exercise properly from day one to infinity. Okay. There is no period in that, if you train appropriately, will you feel worse? Now, that doesn't mean it's not going to be hard or challenging, but there's good challenge and then there's inappropriate challenge. We all know what that feels like, right? I have had good workouts where I'm really pushing myself and I feel amazing. I've also had workouts where I trained inappropriately and I felt like I needed to take a nap afterwards or like I was dead and I couldn't work or, you know, I didn't have the energy to, to hang out with my kids. So you should feel good from day one to day infinity. That's one of the signs of appropriate exercise. Again, it doesn't mean it's not going to be challenging, but if it's appropriate, when I would get a new client, if they told me at the end of my first workout or second workout, when we first got started, oh my God, I'm dead. I'd be like, okay, we went, whatever we did, I don't care what we did. Even if we did one set of, you know, sit down and stand up on the bench, it was too hard. It wasn't appropriate. You should not feel that way. The way you should feel at the end is, and I used to love hearing this, to be like, I feel better now after we worked out. That's how you should feel. Mm -hmm. You know, here's something else that isn't talked about, which is, especially when you're a new mom, um, and I, 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 again, I've heard this from my wife. My, we have a one and a half year old. She's pregnant right now. It's the, because your body's changing and because you're, you're, maybe you were, even if you were fit before and now you can exercise, you're not exercising as much, you just don't feel as attractive. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Strength feels attractive. When you start to feel stronger, that makes you feel more confident and starts to make you feel more attractive. And it's and it's compounded with the empowering feeling uh, or the empowering aspect of the fact that you are choosing to do this. You're doing this thing and it's improving your body and it makes you feel more attractive. And I would hear that from, from people. I would hear that from husbands where they would, because I was always friends with husbands and mm -hmm. they would always tell me like, dude, my... <laughs> Man, I love the fact she's where she she feels amazing. Her energy is incredible. So confident, these confident, days, yeah. absolutely. Here's another thing: 
if you do this right, and we talk about this on the show all the time, if you do this right, proper exercise, in particular strength training or resistance training, speeds up your metabolism. Why, now, how does that improve the quality of the rest of your life? You can eat more and drink more and stay leaner. You know, it, when you're trying to improve your fitness, what can make it difficult sometimes is if you do it wrong and you end up with a slower metabolism because let's say you lost muscle, you did it the wrong way. Now, hey, I'll have a weekend. I'm going to go away with my husband, but I gain five pounds every time I do that because my metabolism just doesn't respond. Why isn't my body like it used to be? Now, if I eat you know one bag of chips, I can feel it the next day. Like, what's going on? If you do this right, you end up with a metabolism that's faster, which gives you more flexibility and leeway. It gives you a better cushion, a buffer to everyday life. And everyday life, when it comes to nutrition, is not perfect. You're busy. Sometimes you do have to grab something quick. Sometimes you do want to enjoy pizza with the kids or you want to go out to dinner with your spouse. A faster metabolism gives you, it's like a get out of jail free card in essence because you burn it off naturally. Muscle does that. Proper exercise in this context for what we're looking here at, what we're looking at here, which is limited time, maximizing results, build muscle. Boy, does that make uh, a, a massive difference. Which leads us to this next thing, which is your time is limited. So one thing to consider if this is you and you're listening to this, this episode, and you're like, that's totally me. You're probably also like, I just don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time to waste is what you don't have. That means you don't have five days a week to just aimlessly exercise, pick exercises at random or follow some, you know, social media celebrity uh, workout program, which is really just designed to get you sore and make you sweat. Yeah. Um, you don't have time to do that. What you want to do is you want to train in a way that's maximally effective. By the way, that does not mean maximum intensity. Yeah. It just doesn't mean like use that old go harder every time and apply that same method over and over again. You got to find that right balance, that right dose uh, that's really going to propel you forward and you're going to adapt and, you know, acquire new strength. And, you know, strength is definitely one of those metrics you want to pay attention to because it's going to tell you a whole lot about uh, how effective things are. It's training smarter, not harder. That's it. Look, I, I'm right-handed, so I could write an essay with my left hand and it'll be a lot harder, but I'm not going to write as fast or as effectively, right? So- you want to train smart, meaning, and I've said this before, a well-planned, appropriate workout, well-programmed workout done in 45 minutes is more valuable than a two and a half hour or three hour random aimless program or a program you just picked off the internet written by somebody who, again, they think that the value of exercise is just how hard it is. Literally, 45 minutes done right will give you better results then two and a half hours done wrong. So one of the big keys here is train properly and appropriately so that you the two hours that you do spend in the gym every week or three hours you spend in the gym every week uh, to yourself really yields you tremendous return. So you get the benefits that we're talking about and you're not just left with sore muscles and an hour of you know sweat. You know, there's one more thing I want to add uh, since we got Mother's Day coming up that I think is, is such a, a powerful thing that... Uh, some of my moms, I think when I trained, didn't, didn't fully grasp. I, I had some moms too, that I remember dropping their kids off that were overweight and then they would leave and go have McDonald's and, and didn't take care of themselves, but they cared about their kids so much that they didn't want them to fall in the same traps they oh, did. And yeah. so they would pay for personal training. And I think what they didn't realize and what I love is that Katrina sees this and recognizes it's like one of the best ways that you guys can set your kids up is by, by being that example, like, and so we, we make this something that the, where there's always every week we have at least one day where it's a kind of family workout where we're in the garage and it's, you know, it's, we have a plan that we're following, but it's like loosely as far as the time and we do mm -hmm. it. Max has got his little table out and he's on there doing Play-Doh or what that and Katrina does a set then I do a set and it's like, and and all I want from that and what I know will happen is that he just sees that this is a regular thing in our life. Like I, and it's I, fun time. That's right. Yeah, and I don't want, time. I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not going to be the dad who you know tries to push his kid into tra weight training early, or I really want him to do these things. It's the same approach that I had with the basketball thing. Like just show, show up at the park. He sees dad playing basketball, mom playing basketball. It's the same concept that, and we're having a good time. Yeah. Uh, and it's part of our lifestyle. Like that's such a powerful thing that you can do as a parent. And so if, if, you know, if you have a hard time, 
you know, figuring this out to take care of yourself first and you still are that, that it's because I know it's hard for a lot of moms that make that transition because their, their love for their child is just, it, it, it's unmatched. And so if you need to come from that place, think like that, you know, if you, if you can't quite figure it out yet for yourself, then do it for your kid and, and let them see you be consistent so you can set them up for an, an, an easier time with probably the things that you struggle yeah. with. You know, Just, studies, studies show that too. They show that very clearly that uh, what you say to your kids is like nowhere near as impactful as what they observe that's right. mm -hmm. in your behaviors. It's like the smoking parent that tells your kid, don't smoke. Don't smoke, right? And the odds of a kid, you know, picking up smoking is really high just because, you know, mom or dad does it, for example. It's unbelievably powerful. And, you know, and I know there's a lot of people that, that are moms now that grew up in the same kind of gener same era or generation as we did. And we didn't probably have the same type of examples. That's why I brought up our moms yeah. didn't do that. And so, you know, I had a lot of bad eating habits. I had a lot of bad exercising habits. And I struggled a long time through my teens and 20s of kind of figuring this, this all out. And, you know, and it's not to, to blame my mother and parents for that, but I do believe, you know, if I had a better example early on, I probably would have pieced a lot of these things together sooner and it wouldn't have been as challenging as it was to get there. And so if that resonates with you and you yeah. were someone that was like that also, and you're now a mother, like let that inspire you to, to lead the family like that and to be the example. So in hopes that your child doesn't have the same challenges that you probably Yeah. Have. You know, the, something else you said earlier too, was about the spending money on time. When they do studies on the value that we get for the money that we spend on on things, the value that we get from spending um, money on improving ourselves and the money that we spend on giving us more time is far more valuable than the money that we spend on things. So it goes something like money on yourself. So like learning something or learn, you know, working with someone to better yourself or hiring a trainer or, you know, paying for a gym membership. Um, you know, spending money on, to give you more time. So it's like, okay, I could get the streaming service or I could hire this person to do some of my paperwork. So I have more time to do these the other stuff for myself. Right. And then experiences, that was the other one. So like spending money on experiences. So like a vacation, uh, is, is more valuable. And then things is down at the bottom. So it's like, you know, I, you know, I could spend money on this, these pair of shoes or this, this new electronic, or I could spend money on myself, uh, bettering myself or money to give myself more time. Studies show that that is so much more valuable. You know, it's funny too, you talk about the other generation. So as, as a dad, I'll tell you. So my dad is old school, old school, poor. He grew up poor in Sicily. And for him, spending money on anything he can do himself is like blasphemy. Like, why would I spend money on having someone change my oil? Or why would I have anybody do my, my, my backyard or any of that stuff, right? So when he sees me do that stuff, it's hilarious because he'll tell me like, why you have, why don't you just mow your, your lawn yourself? Or why do you change the oil? Why don't you just change your own oil? I said, listen, dad, I said, I'd rather take the time. First off, I gave him the whole like, you know, business side of it. And I said, I could spend money on the gardener uh, doing this, or I could take two hours on my do, my, do it myself. But really I could take those two hours and make more than that money back by bettering myself for my work and that kind of stuff. Or, or and I could spend that time with my kids and I get to be with them more and it's totally valuable. So I've had these conversations with my dad and he kind of gets it a little bit, but he's from that generation yeah, yeah. as well, where he's like, why would you spend the, but studies show this and it's very, very clear. So, and, and, you know, and it's, it's interesting because as a trainer, I remember as a personal trainer talking to clients about investing in personal training versus buying uh, supplements or buying, you know, a new shirt or, you know, new pair of shoes or whatever. And I would talk to clients about this, said, you know, one session with the trainer back then was something like 90 bucks. I'd say, you know, and for 90 bucks, which you're going to, which you look like you're going to spend $90 on a bunch of pills that aren't going to do anything for you, a bunch of supplements. You could have a trainer at least write up a workout for you and show you some exercises way more valuable than what you were just about to buy yeah. or way yeah. more valuable. You're spending than, money on efficiency. Totally. And, and that's, I mean, that's how you got to look at it is like, how can I maximize my time doing this? So it, it moves the needle and, you know, hiring a trainer is going to be one of the best investments you make, or, you know, really having an outline plan that you're just not going to waste time. You're going to really uh, benefit from it immediately. If you get on the right path. Yeah. Here's the two, here are the two most important tips for workout efficiency in terms of results 
for the time that you spend uh, in the gym or the time you spend working out. <clears throat> Number one is make strength training the cornerstone. So strength training, what it, the goal of strength training is to build strength and build muscle, the side effect of which is a faster metabolism. So that stays with you all day, every day. So you're not in the gym, but you got a faster metabolism all day, every day. So that means you can, it's easier to be lean. You can eat more and be lean, okay? Or leaner, right? Number two, it organizes your hormones in a way, when you tell your body to build muscle and you feed your body appropriately, your body organizes its hormones to do so. So you also start, you also start to produce a more youthful hormone profile, um, which sticks with you every day as well. Okay. Number three, it sculpts and shapes your body. So if you want to see visible results, not just smaller, but rather shape and curve and firmness and all the things that we want visually, building muscle does that. It, it puts things in the right places. It makes things tighter and firmer and feel better. Okay. So strength training should be the cornerstone. Number two, here's another thing that you should do. And we'll get back to strength training and talk about how to make that effective. But the other part is in terms of just being more active and burning more calories through activity, the most effective way to do that is to inject a little bit of activity throughout the day in your daily activities, in your daily, your day-to-day -day life, I should say. So rather than trying to carve out 30 minutes or 45 minutes a day to walk on a treadmill or get on a stationary bike or something like that, what you want to do is you want to find five to 10 minute periods where you can be active so you eat lunch, I have 10 minutes for a walk, go do a walk for 10 minutes, or I'm going to the mall, I'm not in that big of a hurry, I'm going to park way at the end of the mall, and it's going to take me 10 minutes to walk to the mall. And, and you do this every day, it actually adds up to more activity consistently, studies oh, yeah. will show this, than scheduling time. It also, studies will also show this, that a single bout of 30 minutes of cardiovascular activity is not as effective at fat loss and insulin sensitivity as three 10 minute sessions in the day or five, you know, six minute sessions throughout the day. So it's actually more effective as well. Those two things right there will make a huge, huge impact. Now, when it comes to strength training, there are exercises that are more effective than others. Here's the, here's a little tip train the way that strength athletes and bodybuilders tend to tra train. They've picked the most effective exercises for a reason. Now, I'm not saying you're trying to be a bodybuilder or a powerlifter, but the exercises that they pick are the most effective ones. So don't, and, and generally speaking, although the market's starting to change a little bit, I'll, tell, I'll say this to the moms, stay away from workouts that are specifically, usually, you know, targeting women specifically. Usually those aren't great. They usually pick exercises that aren't super effective. You're doing... 50 reps of donkey kickbacks. You're doing exercises that burn, uh, you're, you know, burn fat away, they'll say, or you may feel it. Right. And that's yeah. like the allure of it is like, you're going to feel a lot of the burning effect and the sweat and all that, but it's really not like moving the needle in terms of building muscle and shaping your physique. Like you're hoping for. Yeah. I would stick to barbell squats and presses and rows and pull downs and rotational exercises that are, are traditional strength training exercises. Those give the biggest bang for your buck. Like a good barbell squat is more effective than five or six of those jazzercise type exercises that they tend to market to women. Literally. So you talk about time, right? A few sets of barbell squats might take you 15 minutes. You could do a whole hour of you know, you know, butts and guts or whatever they call these classes, it's not going to be as effective. So you want to, you really want to try to build strength and muscle. That's the goal because that's what's going to give you the side effect of that all day fat burning, that all day calorie burning. That's kind of what you, you want to follow. And then if you have the means, hire a trainer, even if it's once a week, because they're worth their weight in gold for sure. I want to I add something to that, that uh, like uh, the hack that, you know, Katrina really liked. Cause it, I remember when I like, gave her the permission, like, absolutely, you could do that. It's actually better for you to do that. And that is like, she took like, so we have a fit mom bundle that, you know, she followed obviously during, you know, having Max and then afterwards. And, you know, she would look at the workout and sometimes she'd be like, ah, well, something he only sleeps for 20 minutes or, you know, I only get a little break for this long. I was like, Dude, go do one exercise. Yeah. And 
then go back in the house and go do things with Max. And then when you get another break, do another yeah. one. And then if you get a little bit longer yeah, break, piece get, it out. Yeah. If piece, you have a pair of dumbbells, you could totally do that. Y- yes. Yeah. And, you know, we've got it set up in the garage now, which is great. And she has the luxury to do that. And she's like, well, I don't feel like I'm getting as good of a workout. I said, absolutely, you are. <laughs> you're, just, said, you're following the exact same thing because you've taken it instead of you doing it all in 45, 50 minutes and you've now broken it up over these, you know, three or four 10 minute increments doesn't make it a lesser workout. It's just as effective. Arguably, even more effective. I know. More. You, yeah, you take out the fatigue. Yeah, too, and, that, and you're, at, you're you're doing a much better job. That's the part it. that she it was a registering because yeah. she comes from an athletic background, collegiate yeah. athlete, right? So used to sweating, pushing hard, mm-hmm. fatigue, falling yeah, over, like right. you know. So she's like, it's not hard that way. It's yeah. almost easier. And like once she started doing it, she's like, oh my god, I like to train this way better. So that's kind of she actually takes the the dumbbell from the garage to the kitchen, and she'll set the dumbbell and keep it open. And a lot of times she'll let Max pit, play at his inside and she'll go and just do a set then walk back in check up on see what he's doing go back out do a set and the whole day will kind of look like this workout Mm -hmm. that really is only about a 45 minute workout that she's expanded through the entire day in her little five minute breaks i said it's the same way that you do attack everything else with the house and laundry and things like that i was like take the same mindset towards your workout we have this stigma or idea that uh you have to do these workouts in these you know, 50 minute blocks or they're not effective. It's like bullshit. It's actually better if you break it up throughout the day. And if you actually are a mom, many times that's more conducive than carving out an entire 50 minutes. Actually, going I had a lot of success with uh, clients saying, who said, I don't have an hour. And I'd say, do you have 20 minutes a few times a day? You know, like you know, morning, afternoon, evening. I'd be like, well, yeah, actually I could do in the morning before I go to work. I have 20 minutes after lunch. And I could definitely do 20 minutes after dinner. And so for them, it worked better. And physiologically speaking, you you did say this, it might actually be more effective. Now, I don't want to talk people out of working out if they only have one block of time. It's all work. It, it all works. But it's it actually might actually be more physiologically effective. I've done that where I do all day workouts, uh, where I do like a little bit every other hour. And uh, I mean, I get great results. Yeah, yeah she loves it. Like she that. prefers to train that way now. So. Yeah. Now, th- here's the challenge with strength training. It's more complex. It's not as easy as just going for a run or or going for a bike ride, which by the way, that's that's fine. You can do that too. But like I said earlier in the episode, you want to build muscle. You want to do strength training because nothing's going to give you the bang for your, your buck or your time, I should say, uh, like strength training. But it is a little more complex. So here's some general, easy to follow rules. In a workout, pick about four exercises. Make them compound type exercises, meaning you're moving the whole body. You're not just sitting in, in, in one place moving one joint, but rather shoulder and elbow joint or knees and hips, or you're moving your whole body. So these kind of big, what are called gross motor movements. Pick like four of them, do them in a workout. Don't train to failure, meaning you want to you want some intensity, but don't train, don't move. do the exercise until you can't move anymore. You want to stop short of that. You want to feel better at the end of your workout. So that's some general advice. If you want something more specific and more planned, um, we have programs, we have workouts that you could follow. They're, the investment is actually quite small. In fact, I, because of Mother's Day, here's what we did, and Doug's highlighting this for me. We have the Fit Mom Bundle, which is several workout programs. We have a Bikini Bundle, a Build Your Butt Bundle, and then Fabulous 40s Bundle. Now, the reason why we picked all these is because we went through our analytics. These are the, the bundles that women tend to buy the most of all of our programs. Now, it really doesn't matter. You can follow any of our programs that are appropriate for men or for women, but these are the most popular ones that women tend to enroll in. And so what we've done for Mother's Day is we've put in all we've made all those bundles 60% off. So they're already on they're already discounted because they're bundles. We've taken an additional 60% off. And the way you sign up for those is you go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. You click on one of those bundles. It's the Fit Mom Bundle, Bikini Bundle, Build Your Butt Bundle, or Fabulous 40s, 40s Bundle. And then use the code MOM60 for that 60% off uh, discount. And then the this offer expires Sunday. So uh, Sunday the 8th. So Mother's Day is the last day for this particular uh, promotion. Also, if you want free information, right? So if you don't want to, if you just want to get free stuff and put piece things together, you can go to mindpumpfree.com and we have a bunch of guides on there that cost nothing. And they can help you kind of put together programming and maybe some nutritional help. We have a lot of guides on there that can help you out and they cost nothing. So if you don't want to invest anything, go to mindpumpfree.com, check out our guides. Also, if you want to find us on social media, learn some more. 
You can find Justin on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. You can find Adam on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Happy Mother's Day. 